name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. first reading is from Acts, chapter 4. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things that he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked. 
For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And he brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. This is the word of our Lord. The epistles from 1 John, the first chapter. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, with our eyes which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life, the life was manifested, and we have seen, and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us all from sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. This is the word of our Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, 
peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
this time the children may come forward. to all of you. So in today's gospel lesson, Jesus is risen, but the disciples have not seen him yet. And so they are locked in a room, they're afraid, and Jesus comes in and he stands amongst them and says, what? Peace be with you. Exactly. And then what did he have the disciples do? Yes, right. Here are the wounds, the scars, that you can see that I actually am Jesus, your friend, your Savior. But who wasn't there? Thomas. Thomas was not there. And so later on, the disciples go to Thomas and say, look, we've seen the risen Lord. But what does Thomas say? won't believe it, not me. That is beyond belief that somebody should rise from the dead. I saw him die. He's in the grave, and I cannot believe unless I see him and if I see the scars on his hands. And then later on, Jesus appears again to the disciples and says, Thomas, stop believing and believe. Put your hands here and see that I am the risen Lord. We're going to talk, I'll talk more about this in the the sermon. Thank you. The eagerness and enthusiasm of children is a true blessing, isn't it? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. These are the words of Thomas from today's Gospel lesson. We're all very familiar with these words, but we should not be too hard on Thomas for his disbelief, because all too often his words are our words. His attitude, his thinking, well, those are ours as well. Unless it happens in the way that I want it to, I won't believe. Until God works in a particular way, a way that I deem is appropriate, until then, I can't believe. Well, we must be careful with this kind of thinking. This kind of thinking is putting God to the test. And that's exactly what Thomas did. And it's the same thing that we do. But thanks be to God that our Lord is merciful and ever patient with Thomas and with us. To Thomas, a risen Jesus seemed unbelievable. Dead men stay in the grave. Well, there's plenty in the Bible that seems unbelievable that defy logic and completely go against reason. How is it that God created the whole world in six days? How is it that he divides a sea in two, with a wall of water on one side and on the other side, and that the Israelites walked through on dry ground? Does bread and wine really turn body and blood? of our risen Lord to dead men. 
really rise from the grave. You see, there are plenty of unbelievable things in the Bible, but we don't let that stop us, do we? As Christians, we are called to believe the unbelievable. Now, if someone were to ask me, Pastor Schultz, just how in the world do they fit all those animals on the ark? Well, I think I would honestly say, look, I don't know. But I know that it's true. Because it is from God's word, and his word is true. It is sound and trustworthy. The garden, Noah, Moses, Mount Sinai, Mount Calvary, and the resurrection. These aren't simply cute bedtime stories for our children. They're real, as unbelievable as they might seem. And if we were all honest with ourselves, we might even confess that at times, like Thomas, we are tempted to think that these accounts are just too fantastic, too fanciful to believe. But we must repent of this kind of thinking. Our Lord's words to Thomas are the same to us. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Yes, we are called to believe the unbelievable. The waters of the flood topped the highest mountains. Three men were thrown into the fiery furnace, and all three emerge unscathed and unsinged. One man died on the cross, becoming the propitiation for the sins of the whole world. And yes, Thomas, That man rose on the third day, still bearing the wounds of his passion, and by him alone we are saved. This is the kind of belief that our Lord is looking for. And for those who believe in this kind of way, our Lord offers peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ offers peace to us, to you. John is very intentional about this word peace in his text. He does not throw it around recklessly without giving actual care and attention to its meaning and its significance, like so many people do today with so many words. John doesn't use this word often in his writings, and it's like he's been holding on to this word waiting for the right moment, the right time. And now is the right time. Having conquered death by dying, and having been raised for our justification, the peace of Christ is our prize. Three times does our Lord offer this word of peace to his disciples and to you. It's the kind of peace that the world cannot give. It's the kind of peace that surpasses all human understanding and guards your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's the kind of peace that can get one through a terrible time. It's no coincidence that the office of the keys and the peace of God are mentioned in the same section that the two are directly linked. This peace is a byproduct of the forgiveness of sins. And to have the forgiveness of sins is to have the peace of God. This peace is a reconciliation with God, secured for us through Christ, his death and resurrection. It's not simply an external peace, something that you will find among people or nations or governments. 
No, it's far greater and far deeper than that. There is a cost to sin. And most assuredly, there is also a weight, a heftiness to sin. We all have, at one time or another, felt its great weight. A child snags a cookie from the kitchen when he wasn't supposed to, and until he comes clean, the look of guilt on his face says it all. As adults, it might be something that you said to a friend that shouldn't have been said, or something that you looked at on the internet. And there are plenty of other examples as well. And until you come clean, the weight of sin is hefty, isn't it? It can be felt. But it is a weight that is not ours to bear. Christ bore it all on his shoulders, in his body, when he was nailed to the tree. Now what did that mean for us? Well, it means that we should seek his forgiveness on a daily basis. And by this forgiveness, the weight of sin and guilt is lifted from your shoulders. The result is the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. And as unbelievable as that might seem, it is real, it is felt, it is found in confession and absolution in our Lord's precious Holy Supper. And it's also found in just taking us a few moments to ask for forgiveness each day. So for those of you who believe the unbelievable, for those of you who believe that the walls of Jericho came tumbling down at the sound of trumpets, that a young shepherd boy conquered a mighty giant, and that dead men do rise from the grave, this peace of God is yours, and it comes by the forgiveness of sins. May we all believe the unbelievable and hold that line until our dying breath. May we seek the forgiveness of sins on a daily basis, and may we find the peace of God who is most willing to give it. In Jesus' name, amen. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy... May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your hands we commend Christy, Linda, Paul, Carmen, Rosalie, Jackie, Paul, Lisa, Bill, Ray, Brenda, Kyle and his family, Mark, Mandy, the Limer family. And for those who serve in the military, 
Ryan, Glenn, David, and Clint, and all who were in need, praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us to trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body, given into death, and drinking his life's blood, poured out for the salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, 
Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Wonderful being with you all once again. Um, are there any announcements? Okay, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Um.